This is Victoria Crew. I'm from the Kirsten FFA, and my speech is titled, The Processed Food Spectrum, Choosing the Right Option. I've been working as a cashier at my local grocery store for about three years now, and I've seen a lot of food come through my line. No matter the lifestyle the customer lives, they always have at least one item in their cart that is processed. A 2016 study found that nearly 60% of the calories consumed in the modern American diet come from processed food. One of the favorite processed foods I've seen for families with small children is hamburger helper. When I visit with a customer about their food choice, I hear things like, it's quick and easy, and it has a great taste that the kids love. I've always had processed food in my diet, but seeing more and more families come through my line with more processed food than fresh food made me start to question the making of processed food. What is really inside of our favorite processed foods, and are they good or bad for us? Did you know that the processed food we eat today started out as military food? Starting in 1861, Van Camp, which is still in operation today, supplied canned beans to the Union Army under a military contract. The veterans brought home a taste for the canned product, but it wasn't until the 19th century that the processed food became a commercial product. Processed food didn't predominate the table, and that was because processed food was more expensive than fresh food. Oh, how the tables have turned. During the 1950s, kitchen stars look a lot different with becoming all electric from dishwashers to small appliances and refrigerators. Women soon realized that they could cook a meal that would usually take an hour in under 30 minutes. With more time on their hands, women were encouraged to join local clubs, apply for part-time jobs, and enroll their kids in after-school and summer activities. This was the start of the busy, processed lifestyle we live today. Looking at the outside packaging of food only gives you a small view of what you are eating. But if you read the label, you soon see the bigger picture of what is hidden inside your favorite processed food. One of the main ingredients that is added to 74% of processed food is sugar. Sugar not only enhances flavor, but it improves texture, retains moisture, and acts as a preservative. With at least 300 names for sugar, ranging from rice malt to dextrose, it's no wonder the average American consumes 19.5 teaspoons of sugar per day, nearly 300% more than what is recommended. Many breads are made with refined grains that are stripped of essential fibers and nutrients, along with added sugars for taste and texture. To make up for this loss, manufacturers add in synthetic B vitamins and iron, but the lost fiber can never be put back into the product. Fiber is crucial for our gut health. Without enough fiber, our gut microbes will start to eat the only available food source they can find. Our intestinal lining, oh, along with our body literally eating us. Low bacterial diversity is linked to autoimmune diseases and inflammatory conditions. Chronic diseases are a regular thing to have in the 21st century. 60% of adults have one chronic disease, and 40% have multiple. Dr. Robert Luxton, a neuroendocrinologist and professor of pediatrics at the University of California, San Francisco, stated, there are two diseases children never got before, type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease. One of the main reasons for the spike in these chronic diseases is the hidden sugars in processed food. Sugar is the carbohydrate sucrose, which is made up of the components glucose and fructose. Fructose can only be processed through the liver unlike glucose, which can be metabolized by all the organs. The liver can handle the components in small doses, like from fruit. But with the amount people consume today, the liver gets overwhelmed and has to convert the rest to fat. Sugar is metabolized in the liver virtually identically to alcohol, said Lustig. Before the 1970s, type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease used to be the cause of old age or high amounts of alcohol. But currently, the leading cause of these diseases is sugar. Not all processed food is bad. There are different levels of processed food ranging from minimal to highly processed. Processed food often gets a bad reputation because we get caught up in the word process without knowing what it really means. Says Alexandra Miller, 
corporate dietitian at Medifast. Processed food falls on a spectrum. Minimally processed food is food pre-prepped for convenience, like cut vegetables and roasted nuts. The second level is food processed at its peak to lock in nutritional quality and freshness, which are canned and frozen fruits and vegetables. Following are foods with added ingredients for flavor and texture, which are salad dressings, cake mixes, and yogurt. Then the more heavily processed food is your ready-to-eat food, which are crackers, chips, and deli meat. Finally, the most heavily processed food is your frozen and pre-made meals, which are frozen pizzas and TV dinners. Using this knowledge, people will be able to identify the minimally processed from the heavily processed food when they go grocery shopping. I'm sure everyone is wondering the same question. Are processed foods good or bad? Really, there isn't a yes or no answer, but a big gray area. No matter the food you eat, it's usually going to be somewhat processed, unless you're eating it straight out of a garden. The real question we need to be asking ourselves when picking out food is, how processed is this food? For example, frozen spinach is definitely a better option than frozen pizza. Informing people about the processed food spectrum and what to look out for when reading ingredient labels, like added sugar and nutrients, can open a big door on identifying what's put into our bodies and what to keep out. With this knowledge, people will be able to control how processed their diet becomes. Food is fuel for our body, and it provides us with the strength we need to survive the busy lifestyle we live. People want to provide their bodies with the best food in the world and nothing less. Our body is a temple that deserves the best foundation of nutrients. Don't let it crumble because of some hamburger helper. Thank you.